Good evening and welcome. Uh, the name is Gamzambata. You tuned into the Front Runner Football Podcast. And of course, the dust has now settled. Mamelodi Sundowns completing La Decima. And uh, what a story to the end of the season with the uh, Kaiser Chiefs not being able to get it done in the end. But credit must go to their opponent in Barocca, who themselves were able to pick themselves up and get something out of the game. So much so that they've staved off relegation, forcing Black Leopards, who lost, of course, to Mamelodi Sundowns, into those playoffs. Pulukwani City being the other team that uh, was automatically relegated. It was always curtains for them going into the last match day. So we're going to unpack all of this. And I have a panel that's comprised of uh, Mr. Kelvin Sosebo. I've got Eddie Dina and uh, Veli Limnyandu joining me on the Zoom this evening as you join us on YouTube to unpack all of this. So let's get stuck in. Eddie Dina, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Mamelodi Sundowns, BMT, um, all the experience coming through, mind games. You saw the coach congratulating the team up, up above him on a good season, only for him to end up being the championship winning season. What do you make of uh, what Kipito Mosemani has been able to do in this strange and peculiar season? Uh, first of all, I think uh, I, I deserve some, some sort of uh, horn or you know, jingles, whatever. <laughs> For my predictions, remember, remember, Kamu, I said Standards will win the league. Colombia right. is going to be delegated. Yes. And that's exactly what happened. There we go. Uh, but you know, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, credit, uh, credit should go to, to Sundowns. Uh, I think uh, they even they owe it to the supporters too, um, because I believe that every game that they played, the supporters will uh, give them a guard of honor going into the, the stadium, and then they would go somewhere, start supporting whether they win or lose. They never stopped cheering for, for their team. I think also for the players and the management, it also motivates them. You know, like, listen, we're playing, we're losing, but we still have supporters out there. So let's play our heart outs and they never gave up, and boom, come end of the season, they're, they're, they're the champions. And also, you know, Pizzo in mind games, I mean, everybody knows Pizzo. Pizzo is, the, is, is that coach that would congratulate the other teams, but knowing that it's a mind game, the players, they know that our coach is, is like that. They'll always keep focus. They will never lose anything. So credit should go to Sundowns and the management for, for winning the league. And I mean, you know, you see a player like Gulabu Khamaboris, Davej, coming in that last game and giving us a performance where you see, okay, you know what, you might not have had the best of seasons from a personal standpoint, but professionalism till the very end with a hat trick that was just clawing away at that goal difference and then just going about their job as professionals, not really taking into consideration what was happening on the other side where, as you felt with maybe the Chiefs game, maybe those players had kind of started hearing what's happening with the Mamelodi Sundowns and Black Leopards, but the Brazilians, total professionals until the end. Um, they, 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 go yeah, ahead, look, really. Yeah, look, Kamza, we are talking about a team here which was defending its league title. They had won the last two league titles. And if you remember um, how, how it happened, um, even, even last season, um, when Orlando Pirates were held to a draw by Cape Town City, uh, and they had to go to the last day and Sundowns had to do the job. You know, they had a game in hand and they won their game in hand and they had to then maintain uh, being on top and they did that. You don't want to go with Sundowns to the last game or the last two games, even on points, um, even if you have a slight advantage. If you were to clinch the league uh, title, uh, playing against Sundowns, you do what Stuart Baxter did, um, do it with a two or a game to spare. Uh, Gavin Hunt did it as well, you know, um, especially for an inexperienced uh, coach like Ernst Mirandop when it comes to a league title race, because uh, <laughs> he was going for his first league title, you know, ever since he started coaching, you know. So I, I would say for me, um, as much as yes, the league title was won on the last day, but I, I, I don't think uh, Kaiser Chiefs lost this league title on that last day. You know, um, you check um, the record between the two teams in the bubble. Mm. 
and just the other day I was looking at um, what Sundowns had been okay, the, the, the Chiefs record in the second round. Mm. I think it reads um, five wins, uh, six losses, five draws. You know, um, I, th- I think there's one that I'm, I'm not mixing it up, but so, and also you check in the bubble, the last six matches. So that's when, um, and, and we spoke to Coach Pizzo this morning, you know, and he's also talking about this. He says, the Chiefs form in the bubble. That's when they could see that uh, they are having challenges. And yes, Sundowns also lost to Cape Town City. They also lost to, to Barroca, but they were picking up some wins, you know, they were picking up some wins. And this, this is where the difference was. But also maybe, let's go back, even outside the bubble, just before lockdown, Sundowns, they had their form and they were going to play parades. And that's when they were going to close the gap because they were, getting, they were having the momentum coming back from the Champions League. You know, they were going to close the gap right. down to a point. And things could have been different even way back then. But um, I remember the other day I spoke to Coach uh, Tabosidong and it was just before um, we, we resumed. And he said, you know, he thinks that Sundowns could struggle because Sundowns generally are slow starters. But even when Sundowns were struggling to find their rhythm, I remember in one post-match conference, even Coach Piso said, we are struggling, guys. You know, we are struggling. But Chiefs was nowhere. You know, so as much as yes, I know we want to discuss the last day, and we know that Barroca are a stubborn team. Mm. You know, they are a stubborn team. Yes, they lost for one to Super Sport. Um, before this game, but they lost a player very early in, in the first half, mm-hmm. you know. And when they lost um, Ngubane, they were already, uh, I think they were, it, it was one all at that time. In fact, they, they had scored first uh, through everything. So for me, um, yes, Sundown was superior, and they were superior because you could see also when the quality comes up at the right time. I mean, if, for me, there's a goal which describes the superiority of Sundowns, and when you have top quality players, uh, which is something Chiefs cannot compare to what Sundowns has, even if some of them, like Mabu, were, were not on form. But the secondary assist for the first goal comes from Serino. The assist comes from Shishi. Mm. You know, then the finish comes from Mabu. It's having quality players delivering when it mattered most. I mean, it only took them 19 minutes. 19 minutes for the first time this season. They were on top, and that's what made us. So, see, I mean, you know, Veli makes a point that maybe the, the decline didn't happen on the last day in full. But, you know, you think to yourself, when Chiefs lose that game against Vitz, then they see Sundowns get uh, beaten by Barroca. At that stage, surely there must be something where you're thinking, okay, we dodged a bullet there. Our coach said a disastrous result after his post-match. He didn't know what was going to happen with Mamelodi Sundowns. They lose as well. That, coupled with the fact that there's just another game that pretty much on the last day of the season against the very team that beat the team their title contenders with. Like, if all of that doesn't go into your head and bring out the best performance of your life, what will? Yeah, I, I will agree with both of the points that Vanilla is making. Uh, they're absolutely spot on. Uh, I think with Sandor's pedigree, we all can see the superiority in, in them, the way that they're playing and the way, the way they pick up. As Pizzo has always mentioned, that it's very, very important, these, these uh, CAF Champions League games that they're playing. It builds into their mentality and into their, into their players. They know that they are champions and they've been uh, on, on that scenario uh, before. So going to games like this where you leave it to the last minute, I think Velile is, is actually right on that because you can't go toe-to-toe with sundowns. With the bulk of squad that they have, it's quality after quality after quality. It's just about them uh, being placed in the right time. And I think with Peter's experience, it comes handy, whereby he knows which players are actually going to fill in the void and uh, be, be able to get results. Uh, within the side of Chiefs, there's, um, 
it's not much that could be said because if you see the, the, the dynamics of the club has changed immensely because uh, from where they were and where Middledorf came in, there was a drop and a drop in performance and chemistry from the coaches, the coaching staff to the players. And then when you start having that, this is when now it comes in as other coaches will actually see and assess and say, okay, what is actually happening on, other, on, the, on Chiefs camp or the, the contenders of the, of the league? Then when they know that there's, there's something that, that's happening on, the, on their side, it gives them a motive to say, okay, if they are dismantled in this, in this, met, in this way, it actually uh, opens up cracks for them to actually to drop it. So I think I will commend Peter on this one for actually pushing to the last minute and also uh, willing their players because there's been so much criticism that why Pito is signing each and every player. But I think his plan now is coming to fruition and we all can vividly see. Yeah, it does make uh, the side a, a scary prospect moving forward in terms of some of the, the names that they have signed and those they are still linked with uh, likes of which including the joint top goal scorer Peter Shalulile. I'll take this uh, moment to welcome Shweb Walters to our discussion. Shweb, um, before we go anywhere, Eddie wants you to give him props for his predictions. <laughs> oh, Eddie, yeah, you know, um, I have to congratulate hey, Congratulations, you. Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> 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 Got it, boy. We got it, boy. Yes, we got it, boy. Yeah, you, you know, he got it spot on because I remember him saying um, Polokwane was going no, to be... offline, Shwaib. Right? We got it. Offline, yeah. we got it. Yeah. No, no, no. The relegation, the relegation one, we all got it. It's yeah, the no, no. Oh, really, like, give us something. How? Oh. Yeah, we all got it. <laughs> But Josh, Dave, I mean, we're just touching on, of course, you know, this uh, photo finish uh, end to the season and perhaps, you know, get your thoughts on it. Um, you know, the guys discussing that the decline for Kaiser Chiefs probably came before that last match. Um, and there was a certain, you know, I guess disharmony that you, w you would find there's more harmony in, in the Sundown squad, but amongst the Chiefs players, just not being able to, as a collective, work it out until the very end. You know, you can say what you want about the, you know, the, the coach and the kind of football you're playing. But as professionals, you had one game, really, just to kind of cement your place in history for a club, especially after a season when people said this team shouldn't have been nowhere near the title. Yeah, you see, for, for, for me, I think that is where um, Sundown's uh, su superiority, superiority came in um, with a sense of the amount of quality that they have in the squad. Um, when Sundowns was off form, losing to Cape Town City in the f first couple of games in the bubble, um, you could see it was just off form. It wasn't, there wasn't any other obstacles that they had. Mm. Chiefs had players off form. They had the, the team itself that was um, separated. You had the coach that was on his own, the team that was on. So all of those factors, I think, comes into bringing a decline in, in the performances. Um, at the end of the day, Sundowns, we always knew, have the quality to win games, even if they off form. Even if one player is off form, they will always have. I always believe that when you're playing a football match, if you have three or four players off form, you know you, you're going to have a bad game. But with, with, with Sundowns, obviously, with the quality they have, even on the bench, when they bring them on and they're performing, um, and that is why you could see it against, um, against Leopards on the last day that they were eventually going to score. Everybody was saying, within the first five minutes, we know that Le um, Sundowns are going to score, going to score. Mm. Um, the worrying game was the chiefs Baraka game because of um, the way Chiefs has been playing. And the coach bring, maintained with, with a similar lineup all the time. And the players that are on off form and also um, the separation in the camp. So there was a lot of factors that I feel that, that played a role in that. And um, when I come to, to Saucy's point is, I mean, if you look at uh, Chiefs ending of last season at ninth point, it's a, it's a massive improvement. Ninth position from last season. It's a massive improvement. Um, yes, they were title contenders right at the beginning. The first 10 games, the first 13 games sitting on um, over well over 30 points. So in that sense, is, um, they, they painted a picture that we are title contenders. The way they ended the the way they ended the, the, the season, it's a team that we think that would potentially have fought for, for top eight. Um, and that was the sad thing um, for me. 
um, the way they started. And I always maintained I wanted them to win because of the way they started. Um, but unfortunately, Sundowns is quality. You can't, you can't let them in. Yes, they let them in with Wits, um, and they didn't take it. But you can't, you can't give them a bite at the cherry too many times. Um, mm. And that was the unfortunate part for Chiefs. Okay. And then in terms of players who've kind of, you know, taken the responsibility of getting things done, I mean, you can't make this discussion without Temba Zwane being in it, Eddie. I mean, in terms of, you know, the, the, the goal haul, he's in the, the, the mix amongst the top goal scorers and he's not even an out-and-out -out attacker, um, you know, playing in a very fluid front line for Mamelodi Sundowns. But surely, if you're looking at a player of the season for the Brazilians, he has to be the top nominee. Definitely, come. <clears throat> I think he's one of those, uh, the best midfielders so far in, in, in South Africa. I think he can create, he can, he can create goals, he can score goals, and uh, he can make the team play. So, you know, once you have a midfielder like that, that's why even Velele was saying that if he can take back Kama to Sundowns, he'll be a star because he get the likes of, of, of Zwane that can give him those passes. Kama, you know, you need to understand the type of players that you're playing with. So I think Kama understands that Zwane, if he has the ball, this is exactly what's going to happen. So players like uh, uh, Temba Zwane, I think should be given the thumbs up. And I think he deserves to be the football of the season. Okay. And then Vilile on the side of Kaiser Chiefs, um, obviously Nukovic has been quite the revelation. Whatever coach comes in there to Kaiser Chiefs will be starting with, with a good piece of the puzzle. I mean, no one expected him to come in and do what he's done. He's someone that you can build a team around. What do you do to make sure you get the most out of Akama Biliat, who, you know, we've said this season, brought in on big money, one of the top earners at Kaiser Chiefs, but his performances don't really correlate with what he earns. And so you wonder, is it just a case of bringing in a coach to unlock him? Or have we seen the best of? Or is there only one coach who can unlock him and is at Kruel Corp? I think, um, to be fair to Akama Biliat, you must look in his first season um, when he arrived. And it was Solinas at the time, and 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 how he kind of rekindled the uh, partnership um, that he had um, with um, um, with Castro uh, at, at Sundowns. In fact, um, if if you remember, at some stage uh, there was a time where even Solinas uh, ended up bowing in front of him, <laughs> you know, saying, "Come up, billiard is his mercy," you know, and. The type of football they were playing at the time, um, it's a pity that all around um, Solinas, maybe it was just lacking too much quality, you know, but Kama was playing his football at that time. Um, and if you go and consult the stats, you will see that Kama became the first Chiefs player, uh, I think since the departure of Norwich Mosona, to finish on double figures. Um, that season in terms of goals and also the assists. But Kama's problems started when Mirandop arrived. And things have been different um, ever since then. It's well documented that the boy at the end of last season wanted to leave the club. Mm. And not only him, uh, Castro now was also giving Chiefs problems to renew because he wanted assurance that Mirandop is, is not going to be there the following season. You know, so these are some of the things that we, you also have to take into consideration. But look, um, if you look at the difference between this season and last season for Middleton, it's um, the arrival of Nukovic. He had this target man that he had now and, and to, to play his football. And unfortunately, as much as Nukovic has been good for Chiefs and he kept them in the game, you know, because I think Nukovic's goals, crucial goals, have kept Chiefs uh, in the race. I mean, you 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 go look at the hat trick he scored against Celtic in December. Uh, as Celtic will continue to, to come back, you know. But without Nukovic or without the area strength, what was Chiefs' game this season? For me, if there if there are two games in this bubble, uh, which also proved um, how one-dimensional Chiefs has been, and and I'm struggling. I don't know. I, I'm still not to be convinced uh, because you see, Stuart Baxter's team was not really one dimensional. Stuart Baxter's team, they will beat you with their aerial balls, you know, uh, set pieces, but also um, in counter attacks, they were also strong in counter attacks, you know. Uh, 
so, 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 so this Chiefs team, if you look at the game against Celtic, yes, they dominate Celtic, but Celtic has got a plan for them uh, with aerial balls in the second half, and Chiefs was done. They were finished. And this is what Marokka also did this weekend. You know? So, so yes, Lukovic has been key, but the new coach that would come for Chiefs, um, surely, yes, Lukovic will be a strength because, I mean, teams were struggling with him in the first round, even in the second round, you know? But now, uh, there should not be over-reliance on him, you know? You've got the likes of Kamas, you've got the Dumsane Zumas, um, also play, you know? Enter play. I mean, uh, there were moments where Chiefs, Chiefs would be 4v2 or 3v2, but still, that ball will have to go wide and be crossed, and you lose the advantage that you had, you know? So, for me, uh, these are the things that come to consideration. But, you know, I know you wanted us to talk about uh, Nukovic. I mean, for me, he's been the reason that Chiefs were there on top uh, till the last day. But right. I also want to talk about uh, Mshishi. Because last week on Twitter, I put up Mshishi's name. I said, here's a serious contender. Hey, people were eating me alive. You know? <laughs> people were eating me alive. On what uh, basis? What were they saying? Why, why, why yeah, no, they were saying, no, Mshishi is not consistent. But I'm... I'm uh, show me one... Uh, attacking midfielder. Show, 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 show me one attacking midfielder who's reached double targets, uh, in fact, uh, double digits um, yeah. in the last few seasons. Haven't seen one. 11 goals, 8 assists. I mean, you know, um, and, and, and also speaking to most people, um, especially people in the game, and even here now, it's Mshishi, you know. I mean, uh, look, maybe before. Uh, before this bubble, uh, we had Manyama, who was also a serious contender, you know. Right. But right. in terms of, in terms of the returns, you know, mm. an attacking midfielder, eleven goals. That's, it's for the first time in many seasons in the PSL. That's very impressive. That's very impressive. We've got a question here from one of our viewers on YouTube, um, and gents, you can just uh, kind of put your hands up as to who might want to venture a guess with this, but maybe you, Sosi, because this might ring a little close to home. What are your thoughts on Bobby Mutaung sabotaging Ernst? Ernst built a team last season. Bobby failed to secure X team to stay. Again, Ernst built a team this season. Bobby fails to keep George Malulega. The reason I bring up that point about George, because Chiefs lost their way the time George was negotiating his contract. Um, can I take that one out? <laughs> sort of, sort of, tell me. But Kelvin can come okay, in. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know it's right. Yeah, well, it's interesting to say it's Bobby who's uh, sabotaging him because Bobby actually is the, he's the reason Ernst um, stayed this season, you know? Right, right. Because I know that people at the club wanted Ernst gone at the end of last season when he, he lost the Netbank Cup, uh, you know? Yeah. Um, and also at the beginning of the season, if you remember, there was talk of that Ernst has been given five matches. If he doesn't do well in the first few matches, who's <laughs> a humble cryer, you know? But <laughs> to the contrary, uh, Ernst was delivering the results. If you remember at some stage, even Ernst said it himself, that uh, some people wanted him gone, you know? Uh, he doesn't have a lot of friends, even inside, you know? Mm. And Bobby was there. In fact, he's been there th throughout the season for him um, at Chiefs. And, and I think, and, and, and until the recent weeks. Where for me, I think the challenge has been, and this is where the Kaiser Chiefs management should equally take the blame. Mm -hmm. Their last two coaching appointments, I mean, really. You know, I mean, really. You, you, you look at when they appointed Solinas mm -hmm. uh, to replace Steve. We know that big teams, comes out, when it comes to replacing coaches. Yes. Uh, big teams, they do those things four months, six months prior, you know? Um, you know about the new coach, maybe with uh, two months before the season. The last time Chiefs did that was with the appointment of Stuart Baxter. Stuart Baxter right. even came here to replace VV, and he watched the last two matches, if you remember, they, 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 they were even playing the game against Ajax and Bonuguane. They won that game. And that's what you expect from a big team. That was like eight, seven, seven years ago. You know, Solinas was appointed when the team was only about a week away or two weeks away from starting the new season. Uh, he didn't even have pre-season with them. 
And then after firing Solinas, they went to fetch Ernst from Thailand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> where he was, he was a TG from Thailand, you know? And the idea at the time, I understand it was that he was just going to be there to finish the season and then they would look for another coach, you know? Right. So the, the Chiefs management here is equally to blame, you know? And, and maybe, yes, uh, because to discuss Chiefs, it will take the whole day. So oh, for sure. I don't, oh, yeah, for yeah sure. It, will, it will take the, the whole day. But here, this is a time when, uh, remember the, the club has also been releasing statements after statements to say there's going to be an overhaul and things are going to change, but nothing's changing. Mm. So clearly, the authors of the statements have to look at themselves now. For sure, and they've gone to ground. No sort of communication from them, Sosie. I mean, you just, you know, their the, the, the last tweet was at the weekend. It's as if the club ceased to exist uh, after the results. Nothing from them. No apology to the fans. But let's talk about this misunderstood relationship between Ernst and uh, Bobby. Um, if people are calling for Ernst's head and he goes, does it figure that Bobby must also go? No. Uh, I think um, maybe uh, Ernst is a little bit emotional on this case because as Velila stated, he was actually assisted by Bobby to actually to have the opportunity that he's got. And if I, could, if I can go back, when I was still at Chiefs as a youngster, mm. he didn't actually do much back then. So right. I was actually shocked even the way he left uh, uh, to join my respect, I think at that time, if I'm not mistaken. I think the way he left as well from that stage, it wasn't convincingly because he was not the type of coach that Chiefs were looking for. And I think after that, it was, it was just immediately after Ted Dumitro, if I'm not mistaken. Chiefs were, that's where they, they won the treble and they were winning teams. So when he got, into, when he got in, on, on board, it changed the whole dynamic of the team and Chiefs started dropping from there on. That's why he was let go. So him saying that uh, uh, there's, there's a sabotage from Bobby or there's an internal affairs. I it's, think it's that's not him who's him. saying that. It's one of the viewers. But yeah, I, I hear your point. Just to clarify, yeah. it's not Ernst yes. saying that. Yes, yeah. Yes, no, I understand that. I'm just saying also him because his statement also echoes that. When, he, when someone says there's a lot of people that don't like you, what does he mean when he says that? Well, so maybe it's other people like, besides Bobby. I don't know. Maybe Bobby is actually the only person who likes him. No, it can't be. Then Bobby's not <laughs> the one who's playing. Bobby's not the one that is playing. He's supposed to actually to rekindle the, the soldiers that are going to fight for him. So players, when you have a discourse in players and you have players that are actually not fighting for the common cause or the common objective, Meaning that whatever that you your 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 uh, your plans in, in, into how the team is, uh, shape needs to be, if it's not well understood, I don't think you're going to get any result from any player because if you can see the way, like the last time I was telling you, in contrast to Sundowns, when mm -hmm. Sundowns actually have the floating strikers, the reason why I said that is because if you look at Sundowns and Chiefs when 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 it comes to a transition when teams are actually defending from attacking. So as soon as when they attack and then they lose, they lose the ball, what you, could, what you normally see is, you normally see their number nine, you, you see Sereno dropping into the middle to actually to shut down the, 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 the counter-attack. And on their offensive play, you have your wingers who are staying wide to actually to isolate uh, the, the fullbacks. And that's where now Mushishi comes in with the late runs. And then the reason he's scoring Mushishi and he scored so many, so many goals like, like he did is was because of the assist that he's got actually from the wing play. Because once the wingers, the, the fullbacks are isolated, that's when you find Mushishi sneaking in. That's why he was scoring his goals very nice and easy because of the way that they are playing. So patterning that was difficult for team to actually to understand because they use speed and also to drift balls from coming from behind. Something they do at training, eh? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Shwe, yeah. uh, let's, let, let's talk to the future now because there's a lot of murmurs as to, you know, Chiefs now obviously looking for a new coach, Gavin Hunt kind of being mooted as a, a possible replacement uh, in terms of style, in terms of, you know, we know his pedigree, um, but is there going to be anything different in terms of the approach to the game and being as pragmatic, looking for results as what we saw with Ernst? Yeah, you see, that is, the, the, that, that is my, my argument. My argument was, um, as look, it might be, like I said, it might be biased for me to, to come in because I'm, I'm a, 
I'm an admirer of, of modern dope. I, um, I, I like his philosophy to a certain degree, but what I don't like of him as a coach is he, he doesn't look at the person now that he has and she tried to, to, to work out a strategy or, or, or a way of play with the person now. He will be stubborn in the way that he wants to play. And then you have to adapt. And I think that is the most important or that's the most, the biggest reason why you come up at them and Castro them maybe can't, can't because it's either his way or it's the highway. Um, when it comes to Gavin Hunt, I think that's going to be something similar. Um, certain players will, will also because um, I, I know from, from players that I've spoken to at, uh, at Wits and, and, and why they couldn't survive at Wits because there were some midfielders that were saying at training, um, you just see the ball go from the goalkeeper to the striker and then his back and his fourth and, and, and then what? You understand? So what if you're sitting with a situation like that um, at Kaiser Chiefs and now then the supporters are going to be on your back again? All at the right, end of the day, right. when it comes back to Valili's uh, point, Valili's point was um, Baxter, transition, he was excellent. Yes, they were excellent, transition. Set pieces, they were brilliant. Because even we, even when, when I played against him, um, our, our, our team talk was, if you can stop set pieces and you can stop them from transition, you can win the game. But most of the time, you couldn't because they perfected it. And another example is, and it's a small example, you look at Thierry Henry when he played in the early 2000s, Everybody knew and every team knew you would come in from their left hand side in between the opposition's right back and centre back in that hole, you turn and take them on. Yet nobody could stop him. So at the end of the day, for me, is yes, we knew that Chiefs are, are one dimensional with aerial balls, but you can vary it to a certain degree as well. And maybe that is where they had a, 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 a lack. Um, Chiefs with Baxter had some phenomenal. Um, initiative players, your Shabas, your Parkers, you know, that could, you know, could take initiative. Um, maybe they felt at that time they were given that freedom. With Middendorp, you probably weren't given that freedom, um, which I know I played under him. You weren't. So for me, to answer the question about Gavin Hunt, Gavin Hunt um, he's going to prove me wrong if he goes there and actually does well. Then I will be proven wrong because I don't see it. Yeah. Unless, unless he's also transformed um, into modern, into more modern day football, and being right. uh, also having a bit of a variety. So to answer that question for you. Okay, well, let's see what he does because that'll be interesting to see if he adapts to what he has, or like you say, like Ernst it's tries to get the it's team it's adapt it's to. It's him who goes there. Okay. If it's him who goes there. If it's him, if it's him. <laughs> yeah. We can only de deal with hypotheticals at this point in time. Let's move on to uh, Orlando Pirates, Eddie. Um, yeah, because, because I, wanted, because I wanted to touch on this. Um, on which part? I, I know that the, uh, the people on, on Twitter have been really pushing today. Uh, and even people that I know around have been pushing that uh, uh, Kevin Hunt must go to Chiefs, you know? Yeah. And, you know, but is that the feeling within the club? Or are there people who are opposed um, to, 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 to Gavin Hunt? And why are they opposed uh, to Gavin Hunt? Right. I mean, there was, um, now, I, th I think now recently during the lockdown, or just before the lockdown, there was an article. Uh, in fact, there was a, a, an interview where the chairman of Chiefs was answering um, questions on the 50th birthday from the fans, you know, mm. and where he was talking about the coaches, and he singled out Peter Mosimane and Gavin Hart, you know, and it was not for the first time he had done this thing previously, you know, of mm. singling them out, and I think now it's a it's a it's it's, it's a matter of public, uh, it's something that's out there publicly that uh, Chiefs was going very strongly for Peter Musimane before Sundowns renewed his contract. Right. And I think it's also uh, something that's out there as, as well, um, that uh, there's been talks between Stuart Baxter, in fact, uh, Gavin Hunt and Kaiser Chiefs, mm -hmm. but constantly hear that there are people who are opposed to it in, in, in tenant, you know? Uh, so, reason, really? Eh? 
for what reasons are they opposed to it? Is it the same? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what are, what are the reasons. You know, I don't know what are the reasons. The source, uh, source here. Yeah, but <laughs> and, and also th- this this is something that is also now brought all on the parents into the picture. You know, um, because I think also from Gavin's side, I mean, he's a top coach. Mm-hmm. If you are serious about a coach, and you know that hey, the coach that you have now is going. Secure that coach so that that coach can start to plan. Mm. Let's say on Wednesday, the transfer ban appeal uh, at Cass is not successful. Right. Surely that is screaming that Kenneth Shields should get a local coach who understands the current squad because <laughs> you have no choice. You have to continue to work with the current squad. You know. But maybe that's his condition. Maybe that's what he's saying is that listen, guys, let's see how your appeal goes and then we can talk. I'm not coming to struggle. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't think that's his, that's that's his condition you know I don't think that's his because if, you see if, if they when 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 you are in this type of a situation you must think on the spot I know that yes it's not easy because they've got a coach who still has a, a contract and with a year to run yeah but when you are in this kind of a situation you don't think twice you know because there are vultures out there you know, this is how this is how Chiefs lost out on big name coaches uh, to to replace uh, Steve Compen. You know, mm. because they were dilly dally. You know, right. and then how they lose out even on players. Sorry, Valili. Um, uh, sorry, Valili. So is is Erden, is Erden, is Ernest Merendorf gone, uh, officially uh, resigned or has left the club? <laughs> Probably well, not... the statement is coming out on Tuesday. Ah, on Tuesday. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Back to dinner time. 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 I know there's players that are not happy with him, and I, I'm not too sure about management. Um, I know I can tell you of... management, management, uh, and I and I think even the big man. Uh, mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't think he's been a favorite. That's why I was saying to uh, the viewer or the listener who are saying Bobby, uh, Mr. Top. <laughs> I mean, the reason that Miran Top even finished the season was because of Bobby. You know, okay. there's an ally yeah. in him now. Yeah. yeah. Does Chief Fire play, I mean, coaches or what? Uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at, it was for the first time in many, many, many years mm. uh, that Chief terminated a contract of a coach within five months when they fired Solinas. You know, oh. um, even if you remember when people were complaining, when there was nothing happening in terms of silverware under coach Steve. Um, mm. The chairman, he kept Steve. Uh, he kept faith with him. And, kept yes. Yeah. Until mm. his contract finished. Yeah. In fact, uh, Kelvin would know this. Uh, after, after, uh, uh, mid and, no, 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 not mid and, after uh, uh, Ted Dimitri came mid and top. You know, and as much as there were challenges under him, he stayed for two years. Duration of his contract. Okay, he, he, he left um, when results were not coming, and then came Muxin Echibra, you know, for the second stint. Uh, also, uh, Muxin, yes, he, he was winning trophies but couldn't win the league. But also, at the end of his term, he left. Then came VV. Also, he finished his three years at Chiefs. Then he left. Then wow. came Baxter. Yes, Baxter won two uh, two league titles, but also he served uh, the full duration of his contract. Then he left. Then came Steve. Then Steve also served the full duration of his contract, uh, yeah. three years. Then, yeah. then he left. So even with this one, even though there were all this talk last, last season that they were not happy with him, they were going to go. But, you know, look, he's still here. You know? Yeah, I, look, I don't, I don't think he yeah. survives another so, season. So, so, they are, so they are not a... Uh, you, know, you, you know what they are clubs where... <laughs> no, no, that's why, that's why, that's why I was asking Venile because if it's their culture that even if the coach is bad, they have to finish their their contracts. 
as you say, that's why they end up losing on, on, on other good coaches because they would want to sit and say, okay, listen, let him just finish the, 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 the one year that is left on his, on his contract. Yet there's another good coach who's out there, who's ready, who's waiting, and then comes another team and then they can just snatch him. But I think it's, it's coming to the next question, what, what, where Kamo wants to, to bring in and then we can, I can then just edit on it there. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, this is, how, and this is how they also lose <laughs> on good talent when it comes to players, you know? Uh, they dilly dally too much, <laughs> and <laughs> clubs they come and take them. Before, yeah. before uh, going for Solinas, they had a, a chance uh, to get Hossam uh, Badri, and the coach was coaching Egypt today. He was former coach of Al Ali, um, and they lost out to Pyramids because Pyramids took him as, as a chairman. Then they had an opportunity on uh, Patrus Cateron as well. I was coaching Zamalek today, one of the top coaches on the continent. And this dilly darling again. And look, I'm not saying they were going to lose out on Kevin now, but if they take too long, mm. and, and there are no options. You know, Chiefs used to introduce good coaches um, <coughs> in Italy, but that's not the case anymore. But that's why I was saying, you know what, I don't want to, because the, the problem that Chiefs are too much, man. You know, structurally, right. footballing wise, yeah. Well, let's, talk. let's talk because there's a solution that was brought in at Orlando Pirates in the form of Joseph Sinbauer, which for me is also quite strange to hear now Gavin been mentioned as someone to go to Pirates. Um, Eddie, I mean, JZ surely has earned himself a crack at a full season and a full campaign after doing what he's done by leading this team to third place. Yeah, I think, you know, considering that uh, he came in when they, when they had uh, 11 players, and uh, <clears throat> 11 new players that have been signed, and also that uh, the coaches that were there before him. I mean, look, it's very difficult Kamu, to bring in 11 players and then make them gel and start winning games from the very beginning. I think it will, it will take time. It showed again that when he took over from where Pirates were, and then the players started uh, you know, playing well, and, and although there were some pitches that they were playing bad, but I think... Uh, he did well. He did actually well. I mean, to finish in the third position, considering where he took the team. But knowing Pirates, he is going to resign. And then also that I heard that uh, uh, Gavin Hunt, they also target Gavin Hunt to be to be to be their coach. So you know, Pirates is the team that they don't fire coaches. Apparently, the coaches they resign, resign. and then. They bring the, the, the other coach that, that they, 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 they... Are they, are they threatened Eddie to resign or no, no, they no, resign? No, 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 <laughs> they, uh, they no. They, 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 uh, they, they are not threatened. No, they just... Really, oh, okay. they, they just nudged they, in the right direction to resign, Eddie. Oh, that's a threat. You are nudging me. That's no, 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 it's not a nudge. No, 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 it's not a nudge. It's actually very good, uh, uh, good gesture for them because what they do is they bring you a letter for you to sign to say okay you signed and then now it reads i jay-z i've decided that, that I, I need to resign i need to go so he's not even going to type his Every own letter eddie. Eh? he's not even going to type his own letter no all you <laughs> no. all 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 need, need to do is just sign it and then mm -hmm. and then that's it whatever wow. that is in the letter you know mm -hmm. it's it, it doesn't have to, to do with you so what i think that getting that, i think <laughs> eh? Are we still talking about football? This no, sounds is, very is, clandestine and uh, just sign here if you don't want any trouble. It, it sounds that's why I was asking Kamu, this what is, Naja is, are we talking about? This is, this is Orlando Pirates. <laughs> but the good thing about them is that uh, once there's a good coach that is, that is available or yep. players that are available, they, they quickly uh, uh, snatch them. So I think, given that, I, I, I see myself 99%. I see myself giving and going to Orlando Pirates. Wow. In fact, in fact uh, just a one-liner to add on what he's saying. Uh, uh -huh. I'm told that uh, Gavin uh, well, got this call that said, don't commit to anyone else till end of the season who are coming for you, black and white. <laughs> Others are still diligent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black and white is going to yeah. come. Yeah. Exactly. Breaking news. Hey. I'm telling you. Hey, 
what does this mean? This is a wild west out here. I mean, Jay-Z would have thought that he's got himself a job still. Obviously, you can argue that if he leaves or resigns, he'll get paid out. He'll go back to Germany. He'll carry on with his life. But, you know, you, you would think there was going to be a sense of continuity. And I just, I, I was excited to see what he's going to do next season, considering how he's got the boys playing. It's, it's, it's a bit, it sounds a bit like... This yeah, that... Um, uh, yes, comes a look, to, to, to be honest, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a surprise to me. You, you think... It's what 37.17 games. You're sitting with 10 wins, five draws. Um, you, I mean, you're contending for the league. You, yeah. you scored, you scored 21 goals. You only conceded nine. Um, your goal difference is is, is good. Um, if if anything by it should should be true, then it, for me it's it's all that. As what is what is wanted on top at the end of the day now, um, because. Then it was just immaterial of what was going to happen this season. Um, we knew the purchase of TTM of Birdfest. They weren't gonna. Um, they weren't gonna take on Gavin Hunt. So I want this coach now. Um, it would be very unfortunate for the team because I've always believed, and, and and a lot of coaches will agree that it takes three to six months for a certain philosophy of the previous coach to be out of the team, to get out of the team. Mm. So now you have Gavin Hunt coming in. It's going to take them another four or five months um, to get into Gavin's style. So now you're sitting again with 10, 12, 14 games where you're bouncing up and down with your points because you want to get into the philosophy of the new coach. So then it, and then it puts pressure on the coach. Yeah. So for me, I mean, for, and, and anybody, and even the Pirate supporters, I'm sure themselves, Journalists, everybody would say, would say, we excited. Who are you most excited to see play football next season? Mm-hmm. Is Cape Town City first and Orlando Pirates second? Because those are the two teams that his philosophy um, has come in. Their football identity is there. And, and you're excited to see a, a full season with those mm-hmm. two teams. Because for me, it was under Jay-Z, Cape Town City and, and Orlando Pirates um, under Jay-Z and Cape Town City under... Um, I would say top five the two for the two for those teams. So um, uh, yeah, it's going to be unfortunate. But you know what? We've we've seen we've seen more we've seen more, more um, pre- unpredictable the things. things that happen <laughs> than, than, than this. So you know what? Yeah, we've been, we, let, let me put it this way: we've seen more bizarre things happen in in our local football before. So uh, this is not really going to be anything new. To put it to you that way. Yeah, okay. Well, that's interesting because obviously, I don't know what that does for the, the coach that leaves Stavage. I mean, are we going to have another merry-go-round situation where you have Jay-Z, merry-go, I don't know, Chiefs have to be very careful about their next appointment. I don't want to say there, but of course, you might have TS Galaxy suddenly become a top-flight team next season. Uh, there might be some other vacancies around the, the league. How do you see this merry-go-round Going now, if, if, if maybe, we have it, yeah, look, maybe even Jay Z, maybe even Jay Z going to to uh, Kaiser Chiefs. You never know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you'll it's, go to you go to Galaxy. You go to Galaxy. Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one, I, I can bet on that one. Oh, what are you saying? Can bet. What are you saying? I'm telling. I think that will be. I think that will be. Um, a good one to actually to place him at the TX Galaxy because if, uh, the cha- the chairman and the team are close. So what if, no, what what? Remember, uh, um, uh, Dance was fired in the first division, but now this is the Premiership. What if this is also the return of Dance? Uh, oh. see that makes more premier. sense to me. Because return. The dynamics of the two leagues are different, eh? you know. Mm-hmm. But you don't think, but you don't Absolutely. think Dan will go to TTM. I think Dan will go to. I, I, I think I, I think OTG is going to TTM. Sorry, who? OTG. Uh, OTG. OTG. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I, if I, Island Park, I, if Island Park is, if if Island Park is sold, then I think oh yeah, then I will agree with you. OTG will, will uh, go I, to I, TTM. I, I can tell you now, Shwai, that <laughs> that that is done. Oh, okay. Is that uh, and and, and what one. about the minority? What about the minority uh, stakeholder that's opposing the whole sale? A minority are also saying it. <laughs> oh wow! Which is a twenty-five. Yeah. 
preference. Minority. When you are a minority, we can leave you out and say, oh, no, we'll deal with you. Let's at the end. We'll give you your cut. Here's your cut. Oh, it's harsh, but it's true. It's harsh, but it's true. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, so that's how I see it happening. Um, because uh, even OTG, he did say that he was approached by uh, TTM, mm-hmm. you know? And now with uh, all these latest happenings, I mean, the Mvala and Shanulile going to Sundowns, it tells us that the deal is done, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, the club is gone. Um, OTG will go with this side. And also this side, if uh, TS Galaxy and their project, um, because I can tell you right now that even the first division status has returned to Cape Town where it came from. Cape Town All Stars, mm, you know. Yeah. So, so, so th- 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 those are done. So, in terms of the coaching changes, yes. Uh, but now, there's and uh, where he, he he seems to be <laughs> he's dividing Soweto uh, at this time. But people who are serious and who have their intentions clear, as we've said. It's Paris. And you know, when Paris, when they want a player, you, you, saw, you saw even with Hotto and even with Tyson. Yeah, yeah. When they want a player, they go for the player. Mm. You know? Yeah. That's one of the reasons why, even with Tyson now, Tyson apparently is going to be one of the highest paid players in the league, if not the highest, mm. you know? Wow. Oh, no. Okay, guys, before we get started. is saying something, but I think he's beating uh, <laughs> himself. No, no so, so, sorry for Lily, I, I, I apologies. Okay. But when you said now Orlando Pirates, when they want the player, they'll, they'll make an effort to go for it. I think you maybe need to emphasize and just say they actually just take the player. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> so, you being a former respect player, you know the story. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't ask Shrave, they just take. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You just take at that time. And and they also um same like Eddie will say, the contract is just presented to you and you just sign it. No negotiations, no nothing. You know what? Here's what you will be earning. Don't ask. This mm. is what you'll be getting. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm sure yeah, the, same, like you know, the, same, you know, the same could you be know, said. Shaibi. The same could be Shaibi, said you, when you, uh, you, 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 you actually right, Wait. Shaibu. You know, you know. I, I remember when I went to Pirates, um, when I was sitting with the the, the Duke himself. Uh, you know, you bring a a, a a paper, an A4 paper, and then you will pick it up and then you read it. You will pretend as if he's reading it, and uh, you will say, "Okay, I know what you're aiming at uh, at IX. Okay, no, not bad, not bad." And then he puts it down. So the, what happened is that, and then he got a call. So he had to take the call outside. So when he left, and then I went, and then I picked up the paper. It was a blank paper, blank. There was nothing <laughs> in it. Like, now you are thinking out. So, you know, you know, you know, now you can't ask for more because he knows what you're getting at five. Yeah. At, at so now you'll be like, you're scared to say, okay, if you're earning 20,000, now you can't say 100 because hey, it's, it's too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, they, they can they can they can play with you uh, i mean it's a mind game and, and the mind uh, game is yeah so you end up signing it because okay from 20 okay we give you 50 oh i use defense of thirty thousand. okay let me sign it sign that's it but absolutely there was nothing in there wow huh. the same can yeah, be said come if i can just come in there just for mm-hmm. two seconds when i was at marisburg when um poor Ashete and um, mohale were signed to pirate they, they didn't actually know that they were going to pirate, but the contract was already signed. So they only spoke to us in the, in the, in the, in the, um, in the training field that, hey, finally this deal has went through. But I asked him, did you speak to your agent? What happened there? How do you know that you're going to pirate? He said, I haven't signed it, but I saw on, on Sokala to my dad I'm going to <laughs> Then I was like, how does that happen? They said, I don't know, but I'll read I'm going to Orlando Pirate. This is my last game I'm leaving, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, football what for you. Dunsey football, gents. Now, obviously, um, the top coach usually goes to the one that wins the league season. But in terms of other candidates for, you know, if we had to have a best of the rest, uh, who would you say is your candidate for a coach who's really impacted their team um, and made sure that you know, whether it be 
you know, Dylan Kerr saving Barroca from the drop, or Jan Olderikkerink finally getting them to play like his side, um, Jay Z that we've mentioned. Who outside of the winning league coach is uh, your other coach candidate of the season? For me, I think it's Rikkerink. I think I've, I've stated before. As a tactical coach and uh, as a coach that has actually asked the team for um, more patience on him, I think he knew what he had and the, the type of players that he had on his squad, what they can actually do and what they can deliver. And with the patience coming from management as well and players getting together mm. to understand the coach in terms of how they want to, uh, they, he wants them to play. Because most of the players, if you can look at the Cape Town City uh, players, they are enjoying their football because it's simple, fast, Fast, uh, fast movement going forward. And that's why you see the players like Abu Rulani, they're coming in uh, at the, with the previous code, they will come in as a, an impact player. But now they are more of like a core of the team. So I will, I will actually praise the coach. And I think he has done a tremendous job to actually to put uh, uh, Captain City on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a beautiful spot. Okay. Yeah, for, 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 for me, it's, um, uh, yeah, you... When you talk about coach of the season or, or candidates, you have to look at, at the whole season. And unfortunately, Cape Town City's coach hasn't been there the full season. Yes, we've seen now what he has what he has done, but a full season is your full 30 games. And I like to look at my full 30. And um, I think Eric Tinkler did really well with him up until the bubble. The bubble, um, obviously... It's, it's, a little, it's going to be a little bit different this season to, to, to try and manage uh, or to try and look at who your candidates are because the bubble has played a big role. And um, you look, I'm not saying Steve Compella should be in there, but even even uh, well, uh, Golden Arrows themselves, uh, from 8th position dropping to, what's it, 11th, 12th position now. Um, you look at, um, I also look at Caetano. I think he, he deserves also... Um, Credit. Um, I, I, I would actually put him as a candidate uh, for super, uh, super sports coach. Um, he's done ex- extremely well, um, well balanced, um, always, always in there and thereabout. Um, yeah, and w- I, th- I think with me it would be obviously Pizzo, Caetano, and um, Eric Tinkler. Kevin as well. Why are you leaving him out? No, because Gavin is consistent. He's consistently always third, fourth position. He did, he did really well under the circumstances. But yeah. I think coaches that have, have made impacts on their team, Gavin has been consistently there. So it's, it, there's not, he hasn't done much, much better than what he's done the previous years. Okay, yeah. Tano did but a lot. Very, the reason really why well. I'm throwing, sorry, the show, the reason why I'm throwing this is yeah. because you have to look at the dynamics that we're playing at bits. For another coach with the consistent that you're talking about, could they actually have the same breadth and as knowing that the team is already sold? Well, that was just yeah, you're right. You, you, you're right. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. And that's what I'm saying. This year will be a little bit different because um, we had the pandemic. We had the bubble. So you have to look at different aspects. And, and yeah, you, you, uh, for, for you, you, you take the bubble and how he's motivated them after the purchase um, of TTM. Um, I look at throughout the year. And also because of the bubble, uh, Maritzburg drop points. Um, according to inside campus over there, they, um, they knew they were guaranteed the top eight position. So the mentality of their players were, was basically like a holiday for them. So that is why they dropped. So points. Isn't, isn't, Pirates, isn't Pirates then should be going for a coach like Kevin since he's a consistent coach because they, are, they want to be consistent as sundowns are? But for me, um, when you have a coach in the previous season who had finished outside the top eight at number nine, and he finishes second, you know, um, even though for 379 days he was at the top, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, I, um, I think maybe Ernst needs to be there in the head, um, in, in the top three. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, you see, I uh, remember when we, this award was debated years ago, mm-hmm. uh, and as Jenners and were voting at the time, uh, <laughs> and the discussion was, how do we reward a coach 
uh, who has not won the league title and you leave the coach mm-hmm. who's won the league title out you know and it's not you know you 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 have someone who's going to be the coach of the season and that person is not the coach is not the one who's won the league you know sure. so I'm, I'm i don't know if that discussion is there but if you look at you, you look at uh, i know that maybe in the first few years or the, uh, and that's when the likes of Gavin um, even uh, Roger Tisa previously have won this award. But if you look in the last 10 years, a coach who wins the league wins this award. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, but yeah, that's why I said, that's why I said outside of that, we already know that usually yeah. it's the coach who yeah. wins the league. So I'm yeah. saying yeah. outside of that, we're not even saying yes. that. No, no, no. no. I understand yeah. that because there has to be a top three, you know? Um, and for me, this is where I agree with Shwaib, you know. It's, 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 it's just unfortunate that um, Super Sport going to their last game, uh, they lost because mm. they this were was going to. They, yes. They were contending this, for the quarter. Yes, yes, yes. And this was going to be their, 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 uh, their highest finish since mm. uh, Gavin Hunt left, you know, mm. Mm. Um, because they've never finished higher than the fourth or higher than the fifth position, you know. So for them to be in the top, top four, you know, it's something that has not happened in a very long time. And yeah. going, going to the last... And remember, in this bubble, they had this good record without Dean Furman. You know, mm. somebody who's been the, the driving force in that super sport team for the past few seasons, and including uh, the, first, the first round um, of this season. Lockdown, okay, messed them up as well. But I... So I, I, I would have... Pito, I would have... Uh, uh, Caetano, Caetano. I would have Ernst. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I must say, I'm a bit surprised that you threw Ernst in there, but you're right. I mean, on merit. And I think, uh, yeah, on merit, yes. On merit, on merit has to be in the conversation. Yes, on merit. Yeah. Look, look, Valili, um, Valili, my, my, my question to the journalists are always, Sundowns are always trailing games. So if you're saying now, yes, Kaiser Chiefs has been on top of the on top of the log for 379 days, but they're always trailing in games. So wouldn't it be easier to gauge when they are always on par with their games? But you understand because they always two three games behind um, whoever's top of the log. So because at the end of the day, whoever wins the league, like now, Sundowns won the league. They won more games than what Chiefs did. You understand? So it's the same. You understand what I'm trying to say? No, um, I understand what you're trying to say. But it's just that um, things have been slightly different this season, um, Shuaib. And especially now in the bubble. You know, there was a time when Sundowns was dropping points. And at some stage when they were equal. But still, Chiefs was faltering. You know? And, and now this is where you could you could also see the difference between the quality um, between the two sides because there was a time now where you could say, you know what, uh, these teams are a level now. In fact, even in December, at some stage, the gap was huge mm-hmm. and there was a difference of only one or two matches. Mm. You know? So, yeah. so it's, it's been different um, to the previous seasons. Maybe if you look at... Uh, the tussle between Pirates and Sundowns in the past two seasons. That was different because um, it was issue of the matches, Sundowns was away, and then when they come and they play their game, mm. they are two points up. Um, you know, But this season, especially now in the bubble, not once, not twice, more than that, Chiefs had an opportunity to even extend mm. the gap. And Coach P so consistently said, guys were struggling, but you know what? He was competing against himself. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the go went on, the, the, the yeah. chances were. Gents, before we bounce, just very quickly, Ice Cape Town, uh, we spoke about them last week in terms of them using their experience to maybe get off the, over the line in winning the Glad Africa Championship. They didn't do that. It seems like they then went back and uh, started including the likes of LSR uh, in the mix, as we were speaking about on the show, just using that experience now to get off to a hot start in uh, the playoff cycle, winning against TTM rather convincingly, and then now having uh, a game against Black Leopards in which they uh, yeah, are trying to make sure that they can be the team to come up. 
Shweb, I mean, this is a team that you know well. Um, in terms of how they've started, do you see that they, you know, maybe have just woken up a little bit as to the opportunity at hand? No, I think I, I think they've, they've also come to realise now that they need the experience to go in. I mean, they were sitting on about 12 to 14 um, clear, not clear-cut chances, but final third entries within the first 15 minutes of that game. Mm. Um, and they were showing their intent. And then you get somebody like Elazar Rogers with, with all his experience, um, one goal, one assist. But the good thing is, and, and, what I, and what I liked about it, is that they started off with the experience and the, 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 the new recruits and the younger players came on and actually won the game for them. Um, Sonua, which, is, which I know, um, he, he, he was with us last year um, in and out of the, of the squad. Um, he, he scored the second goal and then you have um, Keegan Johannes, which I think yeah. is going to be a phenomenal fullback um, for the future. He's only 18 years old and he got and scored the winner and, and he always gets he always gets into those good opportunities for goal scoring opportunities um, as a fullback. So I think they, 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 they found the rhythm. Um, the little bit concerning part was that they after scoring um, they then conceded two quick succession goals, right. which Against Leopards, you, you might not be able to come back. I mean, with TTM, yes, um, the, second, the second goal, I don't know if you guys watched it, but I mean, the second goal, the goalkeeper, um, the shot was taken down the middle of the goals, but the goalkeeper was on the one pole, or towards the one pole. He left the whole goals open. So, um, yeah, um, with TTM, um, you, 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 you have Leopards, Leopards is going to punish you. So, my only fear is for Ajax, as much as they've won, um, goal difference might play a part in 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 going going for um, obviously getting promoted because you have leopards now. If you get a draw against leopards, leopards I think will be TTM, and then it's again touch touch and go. You know for the final couple of games. Eddie, I mean, how do you see this one? If you're a black leopards, um, you know you're, you're coming in with your, all your PSL experience, all your top guns. Um, usually these situations tend to favour the team from the top flight that plays in this mix. Do you feel that's going to be the situation this time around? Yeah, I think having watched the, the game Ajax when they played TTM, um, <clears throat> the Ajax were not, were not convincing. I mean, you know, conceding goals like that and you want to gain promotion to the, to the, to the PSL. Mm -hmm. You know, if you play like that, you get punished. So I don't see yeah. them uh, uh, coming with a win against uh, uh, Black Leopards. I think it's a it's a wounded animal. They want to go back to to PSL, and mm. uh, they want to come guns blazing. I think uh, Black mm. Leopards. I would say it now, uh, Black Black Leopards is gonna go back to PSL. Hmm. And really, when and, and, just, um, so, sorry, you sorry, comes and, uh, just to, to sorry, just to touch on that, uh, what Eddie's saying, uh, just one liner. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't myself convinced uh, with Ajax Cape Town's goalkeeper over the weekend as well. Um, I, I think India really needs to up his game for being an experienced player in 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 their team. Um, they're really gonna they're really gonna need him to up his game um, against Black Leopards. Okay, Velila, do you think we'll ever see two up, two down? Ah, uh, not anytime soon. Eh? Uh, ah, okay. no, no, no. Um, Why not? I'm always wondering, you know, a lot of people, it seems to be a popular idea. Who's, who's the one against it and what's the justification for it? Because um, if you follow the PSL, uh, the NSL handbook, mm -hmm. um, you will know that uh, first division teams, when it comes to votes, are disadvantaged there, you know? So if these are things that have to be voted in, uh, <laughs> they will never <laughs> have their take. Uh, Is it like having 20%? You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because when it comes to votes... They are minority. Uh, yeah, a PSL club vote, I think, is three or four times uh, the vote of, of, of a club from, from, from um, the division below. Maybe if, if, if it happens in years to come that uh, the TV, they've got TV rights of their own, Outside of the main league, then look, um, uh, things could be, could could be different because look, as much as this playoff thing is exciting, um, but maybe it should be a playoff <coughs> between teams from the lower division, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and I also think that another Agreed. thing, which, yeah, another thing which makes it tricky is that we've got sixteen teams, you know. If maybe we had eighteen teams. 
uh, and they have a playoff, then things would be different, you know. So, and, and, and it makes sense that we must call for two down, two up, but right. here yeah. we are now, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you also followed uh, the story, uh, the team which is 15th, they struggled. <laughs> they struggle against these teams. Yes, you look at Baroka, they retain their status, but I don't recall Leopards going for playoffs and returning. Mm. When Leopards has gone for playoffs, they don't come back. Because also, remember, the team has been losing. You know, mm. they have been losing, so they don't have the momentum, uh, the spirit is not high, and the teams in the first division, they want to come up. You know? Bonuses, bonuses, valid. bonuses will play a major role too for the Black Leopards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but also, yeah. this is where for me, the experience on the bench also has to count. Sure. And they've got very inexperienced uh, coaches who've just come in now as caretaker coaches. So I think that is another factor as well. But uh, I think as Shwai was also saying, this, this game, this first game, they must get a point uh, from that game against Ajax. Mm. They must get a point from that game. Uh, because also, I'm not sure about the hunger of the TTM players. Because most of those players, they know that they're going to play in the big league. You know? Exactly. <laughs> no, but it's not, it's, not, it's not guaranteed. Eh? It's not, I think, I think no, no, for no, no. TTM, I, I think for TTM, it's a case of uh, not playing to, to get promotion. I think it's, they are just playing because they need to be selected to be in the, in the PSL. Because not, not, not everybody is going to play there. Because mm. now, remember, they're but also going to... But also... Yes, uh, they, they, they're also going to want experienced players too. So, from, if yes, you look yes, at the team... But from the, yeah. from the press conference we had today, mm. uh, with the outgoing Vets management, looks like there's quite a number of players who are not keen to relocate, eh? Mm. I can imagine. Same thing I said. Same thing yes. I said about Leopards. Yes, there's Same quite a number I said about of Leopards with their goal. Yes. yes, there's quite a number of players who are not keen to relocate. Uh, right. So it might not be a foregone conclusion for them that uh, they are going to get most of the players who it fits. You know? mm-hmm. And if you look at what the NSL handbook says, you cannot force a player to relocate. You know? And obviously those who don't want to relocate are those who are already having options. Um, in terms of Remember, there's a team here in Gauteng which has just been promoted as well, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And some players are <laughs> here in Gauteng, you know. So all these things uh, they tie in. But look, for me, I think I'm very clear about. Uh, I would like to see Ajax coming back, you know. Um, I would really like to see Ajax coming back. Um, I'll so, second that one. Yeah. <laughs> when you you know, uh, Shoaib was talking about this boy. Uh, Kigen Ioannis. I saw the boy. I've been following him in, in, in the under 23. You know, he went to the AFCON not as a first choice right back, but yeah. You no, know, I mean this is a boy who's going to the Olympics, mm-hmm. and I know that uh, there are even some Houteng teams which are already looking at him. You know, um, you look at it's it's a pity that the injury has also messed up Apetego Masiatlaha when it matters most. You know. Yes, agreed. Yeah, you can see that. Yes, they are playing him now, but he's not. He's not 100% fit, you know. Sure. But the experience um, of Eliazar Rogers, you saw him this past weekend, not just with, uh, the, with the goal, but also giving uh, TTM problems up front, uh, the assist, you know. Um, so I, I think that's one thing uh, Kelvin Malin managed to do well this past weekend. His subs, his substitution was spot on. Yeah. Um, but I was surprised that these two teams, they were struggling with aerial balls. You know, defensively, Ajax was non-existent. You know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Come to process, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I, I, I just hope that uh, things can go well for them. Uh, because, because I was worried about their spirit. You know, after missing out, um, <laughs> in fact, what happened in the Glad Africa is exactly what also happened uh, in the PSL. A team which had been leading, overtaken at mm. the last moment. Yeah, you know? to finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but when it comes to this one, um, you could see I, uh, Leopards were also missing Musonda on Sunday. Mm. They were just toothless up front uh, on Sunday. And then 
he returns now. And the defense I was com- complaining about of Ajax, how they handle Musonda uh, on Wednesday. I'm interested also in, in, in that one. But be that as it may, I hope the Urban Warriors do this. Time will tell. We'll know fully well by the 21st of September. We might even know well before then, depending on the results. But that's when the last game in those playoffs is happening. Gents, thank you so much for your time, man. It's been a long and robust uh, session. We've been beaming out on YouTube. Thank you to you who's been tuned in. Uh, We will reconvene again to look ahead. Maybe by then, we will have heard by the second-placed club who have just been so quiet since uh, not being able to win the championship. Let's see. Maybe no news is good news. And it'll be big news when they do decide to finally speak. But uh, Sosi, Shweb, Belile, Eddie, thank you so much for joining me this evening. And to you two who's been watching. With some help from uh, Fidel, who's in the background, I appreciate him too and his contribution. Until then, let's uh, have a good week, folks. We'll catch up in a week's time.